haven't done a video in a while. We have a good one today. Um, let's wake up to find out SolarWinds has been compromised with the supply chain attack. It's pretty interesting stuff. So um, I'm just going to show you real briefly some of the things that you could do an extra job right now. And I'm not going to speak for our PM team or what we're releasing, but I think we have some cool stuff that you should keep your eye out on that we're going to be actively releasing to help um, detect and understand what's going on with this pretty sophisticated attack. So let's get started. I'm not going to go into every piece, but on the FireEye uh, threat research paper is legit. I mean, FireEye puts out some great stuff. So essentially, it's a it's a backdoor within the supply chain that was coded into SolarWinds, which is in thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of clients, right? It's ubiquitous in the IT industry, so it's pretty scary. So they're able to move laterally within this environment and be able to understand what's happening, right? So they can go in there, they can use the SolarWinds tools to be able to move within the organization looking like a legitimate tool or product. So it's pretty scary. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are getting asked the question of how we can leverage XDrop. So I just want to briefly show kind of what are the, some of the pieces and parts. We're not gonna be able to do everything that this attack does, but there's a lot of really cool things that network detection response and XDrop can speak to in an attack like this. I think we're very well suited to be able to understand what's happening. So let's get into it. First and foremost, it's using the, the, the beacon malware is using a, a cobalt strike beacon. We have a detection for that. So if that's one of the things in your environment you're seeing, we want to pay attention to that. If you see cobalt strike, that's a, that's a telltale sign of breadcrumb to be able to watch, right? Um, the attacking the attacker infrastructure leaks his configured host name and RDP SSL certificate. So that was interesting to me. So if you're doing some recon and you see some potentially, hey, this is very strange, or I've had some detections on it, you could dig deeper into records and packets with XDROP to detect those SSL certificates if you wanted to. Be able to understand, was I exposed? Is there some, some strange things happening on there? So that's something that XDROP does really well. We can take the SSL certificate and parse the envelope and provide details associated with that and records and within packets and with our 90 day look back, you could go back pretty far to understand is my SolarWinds infrastructure doing some strange SSL lookups. So the attacker's choice of IP addresses were optimized to evade detection, right? So any good attacker is going to use, you know, virtual servers, cloud servers within the country. So country designation is really a tough one anymore, right? It's not, any sophisticated attack is not going to have like your house or your server going to Russia or China. They're going to bounce multiple times, right? So that's a tough thing for, you know, security. How do you defend against that? And we'll kind of talk about that as we roll through this. Um, lateral movement using different uh, different credentials. Like, so that's something we're well set up to do with our ability to see LDAP and Kerberos and users directly from the wire and who they're communicating with, how they're executing against things like critical services like file servers and domain servers, so they're leveraging their credentials. So this is where the kind of scary part comes. They replace a legitimate utility with theirs and executed a payload. So this is within the supply chain. This is really gets scary because we just assume this stuff is secure and this is a big one, right? And so they manipulated tasks and the and they actually put in back doors inside of a tool that gets downloaded and updated hundreds and thousands of, of clients. So what are some of the detection opportunities they talk about here? Defenders can examine logs for SMB sessions. We can get that directly from the wire. One of the best parts about extra hop and network detection response is that we don't rely on logs. You can evade logs. Logs are still very important, but we don't rely on them. You can evade them. You can look directly at your Windows SMB sessions, and I can, I'll show you that. You can look directly at these transactions, and there's nothing you can do to evade us. The attackers for this attack, for some burst shoulder winds, have to communicate in the wire, period, and stop. They don't have to log, and they don't have to be running where there's an EDR. Right, so we are able to detect and see that traffic and be able to show that to you as you do your forensic analysis. We live in a post-compromised world, so understanding these transactions and digging these up is really, really important. So understanding when you're seeing those Windows attacks, when you're seeing those un unusual connections, we have a detection for that. We can see when those Windows file shares, hey, this is very unusual compared to his peers, all of a sudden your SolarWinds servers are doing these lookups or someone who's communicated with the SolarWinds is recently doing a bunch of lookups for unknown binaries. So it's a use it in an obfuscated backdoor. We talked about that multiple block list to invite to identify forensic and antivirus tools. So it's very sophisticated to we're going to see more and more of this. This is potentially a nation state, right? We're going to see more and more very sophisticated attacks, whether supply chain or really well written, almost productized malware that's going to be off off escape antivirus EDR and going to drop things like logs. And so network detection response is a huge part. Now we're going to start to get our seat at the table because having this is going to allow you to be able to see everything that happened. You can't drop network packets. You have to communicate in the network, period, stop. And then if we can see those breadcrumbs, we can start to understand what was potentially exposed, how we stop it, and how we can remediate it. 
couple other things. The domain generating algorithm here is something that we detect as well. So if we see strange domain generating algorithms, we're going to detect that. So that's one of the signs here, right? So it's something that we can look for and see, do we see that strange algorithm? Do we see something weird happening on the wire from that perspective? Um, so C2, command and control. This is huge. I mean, this is kind of the bow on top. And this is what I'm going to show you is that we look at things like command and control behavior, unusual detect uh, traffic uh, out to the internet to an external endpoint, right? So we're going to see um, beaconing, you know, that's happening from cobalt strike and other things. So we're really good at understanding when you're communicating with the outside world, what was said and how is that unusual? So we're really well set up for that. And this, you have to still communicate with some server, even though it looks like it's something that's good, you can use extra op to understand what was communicated to do an error and look up to see who that IP is registered to. And now is the time to really take the time to understand who am I communicating with the outside world? How do I make myself as safe as possible to ensure that my communications to the external world are safe, that I've audited them, that I've cleansed them to the best of my ability. And XDROP is a great tool to do that. Some other things uses um, HTTP requests moving back and forth. So you could use packets and XDROP to be able to diagnose or do some post compromise analysis. If you have this in your environment to look inside to see what is inside those HTTP requests that can potentially be diagnosed or looked at from this attack. And then um, finally, the MITRE attacks observed and then the it has a, a link in here to some of the things you can do. Obviously, you're going to want to upgrade to the latest version of SolarWinds. But this is a kind of a post compromise event, which is XDROP's really well set up to do. So let's kind of flip over to XDROP and kind of see some of the things that we could that you can do today. All right. So this is going to fall into the behavior anomalies um, category for us. So what are some of the things that we're going to be looking for? You want to really go through and understand, and maybe you have done this before with your XDROP, maybe you haven't, but now's the time to take the time to understand every error you see in a communication with an external endpoint, understand that external endpoint. Who are you communicating with? Where is that happening? So when you see detections like unusual interactive traffic from an external endpoint, understand that right understand what's happening right what is this ip should be communicating with that ip you know do a do a lookup use our threat intelligence we're actively adding the ips that are exposed they're exposed in the sunburst to our threat intelligence feed so if you're still getting those communications we're going to actively add those to ensure that if you still have some you know some leftovers that are communicating to this we're going to bubble that up for you do a lookup from an errand perspective of who this ip is is this really the the vendor that I expected it to be? Is this really the person that I thought it was going to be? Really audit these things and try to lock down as much of these external connections as possible. Look at suspicious SMB file shares. That was one of the telltale signs. Using SMB, grabbing binaries. Is this, you know, we have one for executables, you know, so understanding and really going through this, right? You know, look at ransomware activity. Obviously, you should always be looking at that. Look at data exfiltration. Are you sending large amounts of data, you know, out to external endpoints? That's another one. Look at things like command and control beaconing, which is another one. Cobalt strike. Ensure that those aren't just your scanners, aren't just things that you already know exist. Really audit those to ensure that you're locked down the way you want to be and that you haven't been exposed. Look at unconventional protocol communication, network privilege escalation for lateral movement. So you really want to, anything with an external endpoint, we really want to dig into and ensure and audit and go through and acknowledge and hide those. If, if, they are, if they are something that is good, go through and acknowledge it or hide it and say that this is an external endpoint I own or use our custom parameters to put that in to say, hey, this is IP I own. That way you're going to get that, this feed really really clean and so when that does pop up to an external endpoint that is potentially exposed from Orion utility you're gonna be able to see it understand it and dive into it this is an opportunity to really leverage the power of XDROP and kind of what we do very well and so a couple other things you're gonna to want to enable the threat intelligence you're gonna hit the gear up here make sure you're check, checked into all your threat intelligence feeds that's gonna give you some coverage from understanding of those IPs that are released in this particular attack what's been exposed okay and then uh, finally, just a few more kind of detections that you can look up here. So we're going to look at things like, um, you know, scanning internally, obviously, so you're understanding what's that. But things like SMB, you're going to want to understand. We already talked about. You're going to want to understand what's moving back and forth within your environment to external endpoints. That's the biggest bang for your buck um, with this. So understand unusual traffic from endpoints. And then the last place that you could potentially look that we've added, oh, I don't know, probably in the last... Um, for the last couple of releases 
is you can look at the perimeter view and accepting inbound connections. So you want to see, make sure you don't have any suspicious connections, but you can look and see who's accepting inbound connections within your environment. So not only can we have detections for cobalt strike external endpoints, you could then audit who's accepting external endpoints, routable IP addresses, right? So you can really start to audit and understand from a detection perspective, or unusual traffic, we've got some strange, you know, command and control behavior, some beaconing, we want to understand that stuff. And then we can go through and do an audit, and you can export this or use the API to understand everything that's communicating with the outside world. You can then remediate that through your firewall, through your EDR solutions, to really ensure that you're as secure as possible in what we consider now a post-compromised world. All right, thanks guys, appreciate it.